We Got This Africa is an April Communications production with support from Kaiser. Proudly brought to you by Frytol. Frytol, you deserve a life of goodness. <laughs> Girl, listen. We got this. Today, we're talking about sex. And no, it's not one of those fun, exciting conversations about sex. We're talking postpartum sex. Sex after having a baby is one of the things we don't talk about enough in this town. Childbirth is a very glorious and wonderful experience, but with it comes a lot of shock, trauma and change to a woman's body. Today, I'm very excited to be talking to two of my friends about postpartum sex, what it is, what it is that your midwife didn't tell you, your mother didn't tell you, and your friends aren't telling you, and you probably aren't talking about too. My name is Na Ashoko, and you're welcome to We Got This Africa. We Got This To have a hearty, healthy family. Frytol Sunflower Cooking Oil. Also cholesterol free for tasty, healthy meals. Love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. You're watching We Got This Africa. Today we're talking about sex after childbirth. And I am happy to have in the studios DJ Blabo. Dun, 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 dun. I should come DJ for you one day. You should come DJ yeah. for us. I know. You should have brought your turntables. Next How you time. doing? I'm good. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, you. Also, I am pleased to have the PRO of the National Association of Registered Midwives. Wait. The Registered Midwives Association. <laughs> Rosetta, how are you doing? Did I get I'm that right? National Association of Registered Midwives, Ghana. Ghana, right, right, yeah. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm blessed. You're welcome to the show. Thank you. So, ladies, this is the one thing that um, I, 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 I don't know about you guys, but I never heard the term postpartum sex until I was postpartum. But I guess you, you are a nurse right a midwife so you know all about it yeah okay so let me ask you this what was your biggest shock about postpartum sex okay so um the shock of my life was uh, my in one of my beds i actually started having some smell from down there i was doing everything perfectly i you know the hygiene I thought I was doing everything right, but then I decided, I, I, I suddenly started feeling some kind of sense coming from there. And it was the shock of my life because I was doing everything right, like the hygiene, everything was in place. So what is this and where is it coming from? And then I felt like the muscles there was kind of losing. So I didn't have that with my previous beds. And um, with CS, people actually think that when you have CS, the place is still tight and intact. So, yeah. so then where is all this coming from? Because I've had previous vagina births and I didn't experience that. Even that was supposed to at least have gotten me there. But with this one, the place was intact. So then where is this kind of losing of muscles coming from? And then the, the, the sense that I was getting from down there, so I was like, seriously? No, I didn't expect that. So that was the shock of my life, though. Even as a midwife? 
Yes. So you had like a shock even as a midwife who deals with women who are having babies every day. Sure. Wow. What was your biggest shock? Hmm. When I go home after birth, I think a day after I couldn't sit well. I always had to tilt myself to one side. And then my mom was like, what's wrong with you? Why can't you sit? And you have to sit up to breastfeed the baby. That was where I realized, no, I can't sit well. And then two days time, it was worse. It felt like there were pins in the seats when I sit. So I had to go back to the hospital and they told me, oh, it's because you were staged. You were staged? Yeah. You had a tear? I had a cut, yes. Okay. So after the nurse was like, don't sit in hot water. Just make sure you bath with warm water and wash the place regularly with a lot of water. But it wasn't doing any good to the pain. It wasn't bringing it down. And later, I, just like she was saying, the order changed. You also had body yes, order? Yes, yes. Okay. And then I had to go back to the hospital. And they told me, you can't come here with every problem you see with yourself. It's changes. It's part of childbirth. And imagine being my first time, I had to cope with it. So I told my mom, and she was like, don't worry. I'll get this. I think Savlon. Savlon did the magic. Okay. So I had to bath with a lot of Savlon, wash there with like two buckets of water every day, which is ah. every morning, yes. With like a whole pipe hose or what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So you yes. water. water. Yes. Really? Um, according to the midwife, they were like, it's the excess blood that was still in there that's coming out, that brings out those scents. And then the pain was going down, but I feel that pain till today. Because anytime I constipate, you know, you have to yeah. put in some efforts to bring it out. And doing that in that process, I think, I don't know how it happens, but in a way, I get, I still feel the pains there till today. From your first child? Yeah. How long ago was that? Seven years. Seven years? Yes. And you still have the pain? Yes. And even my, I, I've had my second child recently. I didn't feel that much pain through birth. I wasn't cut. But the moment I constipate, that problem has to come. Well, I have a friend who still pees on herself a little bit every time she sneezes. Like the moment she sneezes, pee. Wow. And her baby is like 11 years old. Wow. Yeah. It does happen. She has CS. I don't know. Okay, so most of the times people with CS get those kind of problems oh, because, because in the, the process of in the process of taking out the baby, you see the bladder is quite closer to the uterus, okay. so they have that connection. So the least the surgeon does, then it, there can be an um, it's either um, the the surgery there was one way or the other it had to hit the bladder some way. So it might have. Affected yes. it. Yes. You know, now that you guys think about, I talk about it. I think I remember when I had my first child. After I had the baby, so I, I had C sections for both my babies. So I've never had a vaginal delivery. So I mean, I don't know if I should say this, but I'm glad I never had a vaginal delivery because I hear the stories about vaginal deliveries, and I'm like, how are you guys okay? Like you can have a tear all the way to your anus, mm -hmm. and then it's torn, yeah. and then they stitch you back up. And then you go home and you are supposed to be having sex. Yeah. How do you have sex with that? It's crazy. It took me like one and a half year to have sex again after my first bed. Mm. Yes. Really? Yes. Because I was scared. One and a half Because even years. if just constipation can just bring the, the pain back. The, the scared you wear, the scary that It's the caused, pain. The pain was still there. Yeah. It's the pain. And how about the feelings? And I couldn't even wear tongues again. So till now you I have to You didn't also feel to, for it. I will feel for it, but the thing is, I have to sit and think about if just constipation can bring back the pain, then how much more about sex? Wow. So I had to kill my mind on sex. Wow, I see. Yeah. One well, the years. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't cool. married at that time. Okay, oh, so you just, you just didn't yeah. care about yeah. it. Well, that's a long I time ago. I think though. that helped. But how did you like, bring your, re -psych your mind to want to have sex again? Um, that was when I met someone again, because okay. I wasn't married to my first child's dad yes and then you know i have feelings he has feelings and as time goes on went on i felt let me just give it a try if it still hurts or if i feel any pain then i'll just kill my mind off it <laughs> yes i see and but did it i hurt? tried it did it did but the guy rather enjoyed because it felt tighter yes interesting because yes. of the stitch yes, yes. 
Really? Yes. Is that a thing? Yes. <laughs> Tell me about it. So when mm. they stitch you up, they, you become smaller? I it think depends, so. Depends on, it it and depends how you treat yourself. Yes. And okay. it depends on the midwife or whoever did the suturing. Okay. Because I think you guys just... No, no, no. We don't just do you that. Just do no, it. no, no, no. Because I've heard, I've heard stories no, about no, no, how no, no, no. you just stitch it up. Like that, that's that's so wrong. They do it like it's I no watched, work. Okay. I watched See? the nurse do it. And like that it's even... No work. Yeah. yeah. It, they, just like you're saying, they just do it like that. No, it but, but it's not like, like she's doing like... It's like just you know it. your work, so it will just flow easily for you. Yeah, it's not but it depends. Thing. It depends on whoever is, is doing the suturing. Okay. Because um, if the person is not too perfect at doing it, mm. then it might not come out well. Okay. Just like the CS, you can have a, a surgeon who will suture, and then later you realize that the place, you can't even see the scar. Like yeah. the CS scar is yeah. not visible. And you can have somebody do it, and then it comes with a lot of complications. So the... Esperti, who is doing that, is much... Is, 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 okay, yes, so give me, give me the filler. Give me the filler. <laughs> when, oh, no, so I have, some, have, I have some mothers uh, okay. who, who came in for the birth and they, they didn't have any kind of tear. But they were saying that, oh, Madam Mon Yana Mon Pama. And I was like, why? There's nothing to suture. Why do you want us to suture? Wow, that I, well, yes, with my first child... Um, I got a tear and then it was, the, it was sutured. And afterwards, the place became so tight and my husband was enjoying me. So because you of see? that, I, I, don't, I hope the place is not too opened up. I wish you could suture. I said there's nothing to suture. Then I'm sure that's so, why the other mothers were requesting for the stitch. Because they'll feel see. because they weren't tired, the place will become too open. I so have you need never heard this tighten. before. Oh, In fact, what I places. often hear is that when you have a tear, mm -hmm. it just opens the whole place up. So, and you know, like your pelvic floor just smashes like an egg and the whole, like you can't even hold urine. You can't, you can't hold urine basically. When you need to pee, you have to pee immediately. Yeah. Otherwise you might start peeing on yourself a little yeah. bit. Yeah. That's no, right, yeah. right? Yeah. No, it when you have it, say. It happened to you? Yeah. No, we have, we have a condition. That is a condition on its own. What's it called? So it's a prolapse of the pelvic okay. floor muscles. Okay. So if the place gets, the prolapse condition sets in, then the muscles become so bulky. And then it looks like sometimes it even falls. And then you can feel it at the entrance of the vagina. Hmm. So that is a condition on its own. Ah, <sighs> Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. The conditions varies from person to yeah. person. Yeah. From yeah. person to person. Yeah. Okay. So if you don't suffer that, then there is no condition attached to the suture or the perineum. Then fine, you are good to go. The place becomes tighter. You can have your pelvic floor muscles um, exercises, the Kegel exercises, and you are good to go. The place will just strengthen up. The muscles will strengthen with time. Do you do you midwives tell mothers this in the hospital? To do key girl exercises like no, and the rest. No, because no. you guys, you don't tell us anything. No, we do. You have to go and find this information. Because I never No, we do. That. We do. Really? We do teach them like myself. Okay, I would say that personally, I do. Mm. And it's not because I'm on camera. I'm saying it because personally, I've taken upon myself to educate mothers. So... Mm. People get to me all the time on social media. I tell Asking it to you. Rosette, yes. Okay. Okay. I tell it to Rosette with their questions and other things. So I know most of the questions they do ask. So when I meet you in person as a client, I pay attention to most of the questions being asked um, on the internet. Okay. Then I try okay. to let you know before you get okay, to the so house. So you're doing that. Well, that's so I'm good. doing that. Yes. Let's talk about how to prepare yourself or how to psych yourself up for sex right after birth because believe it or not you have to psych yourself up because maybe you haven't even had sex for a very long time depending on the kind of pregnancy you had and if you had all these tears and so on it could be very traumatic because while childbirth is beautiful it is trauma to your body i mean as a whole human being coming out of your vagina or you have been cut open had a major surgery and a child has been taken out that is trauma yeah how do you prepare your mind your body and all of that for sex after a baby? Well, I'm still preparing my mind, my body, and everything. You're still preparing yes, your mind? Yes, because now in my condition, it feels like I can't wait to try it again and see okay. how it feels before a year. Because with my first child, it you was waited. after a year and some months. Okay. But this time, I feel, how is it going to feel like? I can't wait. Okay. But my husband is scared. Because he Why feels he the baby is still young, okay. anything can happen. Maybe the saw is still not healed. He might hurt me, you know, a whole lot of things on his mind. So for, I'm still preparing and I'll need some coaches from you. Okay. Yes. 
Okay, so uh, basically, when it comes to the medicine field, okay. then it's more like six to eight weeks after birth. That mm -hmm. is postpartum. A woman who is not having any side complications is fit to have sex. That is, if you are okay and you, you think that, yes, I'm ready for it. Mm. So preparing your mind, actually after birth, eh, there's something that happens. There, there are some hormones that are released, that are prolactin hormones that are released for your, um, the breast, breast milk to and come. So on. Yeah. Okay. So when that then sets in, it reduces your pregnancy hormones. That was your usual... Uh, womanhood hormones, the yeah. estrogens and the progesterones. So uh, the moment that there is a drop in estrogen, then it means that there is a problem. You are going to experience dryness in the vagina. You are going to experience... Um, sometimes people get off the libido is just so floppy, like it goes down. You don't even have the edge to have sex. Okay. Yeah. Mine but is no, but uh, but it yeah. comes, you know. But with me, why does uh, she have that? Is that yours? She says hers is rising. Like she, yes, she doesn't. It, you have. know, um, there is this floppy atmosphere going on in in the system. The estrogen and the progesterone, they are all trying to restable or get back to their the, the, the yes. And in the in the process of that, it either gets higher. One of them either gets higher to boost okay. you to have the edge to do it, or it just goes down. One also drops so much that you don't even have the edge to do it. So with me in person, I think um, I wanted it not because I, my body was ready for sex, but I was feeling like I'm starving my husband. Okay. Did he complain about it? No, he wasn't complaining, but I don't, you know... As women, sometimes we feel like, no, I don't have to stop this guy. I'm not being fair with him. Okay. So he wasn't ready for it, but I was, I was still be like, oh, then yes, 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 that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's, it's what goes on in your mind. It, psychologically, are you ready for it? Mm -hmm. Then you try it and you realize that, no, I'm feeling some pain, so Charlie, I'm not ready. Okay. Or you try it and you feel like the place is kind of opened up too much. Because it gets the place some time to get back. When you are doing the exercises and you're having your warm sit bath, you are good to go. So if you haven't really done that physiological thing mm -hmm. or the physical aspects, and then you are just too much ready for the, the thing, you will get in there, but you might sit on the rock and we say like, oh no, I'm not really ready for this. Did so you then, find that you were not ready? After I, 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 tried, I tried once and I realized that no, there is pain. And he also said that the place is quite opened up. Okay. It wasn't compared to my, my own self, yes. like, yes. So it means that the place was still healing and I needed time for myself. So when, the, when it heals, does your vagina close back up? Or, I mean, when it opens up and it heals, it just remains the same? So it all depends on the individual. Depending on you because um, your muscles, you have a, a, a part to play to make it back, to get it back to normal. As much as at, after birth, um, ideally, it's supposed to get back. Sometimes, since it's, um, there is pressure on the system, you know, you have carried this baby, and then all the muscles have losing, they've loosened up because of the birth process. You know, it, it doesn't take just two, like six weeks that we are saying to get back. But it depends on the individual. How are you taking care of yourself yeah. after birth? Like how? Like what can you do to the make your The exercises. Better? Okay, so Kegel very, exercises. Very, very, very important. How do you do a Kegel exercise? So let's say that I'm out there, like we are sitting here right now, and I'm feeling like I want to pee. But it's not the right atmosphere, or I can't do it. So what do you do? You hold on to the urine. So that kind of holding on to the urine, like you are tightening your body up. You hold the pelvic floor muscles up. In the process of doing that. So as much as you are holding on to the urine, you know, the muscles are getting constricted. Okay. And as much as they are constricting, they are becoming firmer because you are training them. So the more you do that, the much better it gets. So the, the place then strengthens up for you. And then you do some warm sit bath. Then, you know, with the warm sit bath, the atmosphere or the temperature of the water gets in there. And as it goes in there, it helps with the healing processes. Because blood supply then becomes small to the area because of the warm water you are using in the Charlie. sex work. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, I mean, you have a baby and you're happy, everything is nice. Now you have to sit in hot water, you have to hold your vagina. You know, I, I, I learned about Kegel exercises a long time ago. I was listening to Sister Sister um, 
with Jessica Parisa for a long time ago. I think I was in, it's a long time. It's more than 10 years ago. I, I, don't, I don't know about that. Okay, I don't know how long ago, but she, she had guests and they were talking about Kegel exercises, about how, you know, you just, when you want to pee, the way you hold your, yeah. your pelvic muscles and then you release it, hold and release yes. it. And if you keep doing that, it's going to make your vagina tighter. I know this is weird. So I told my friend about it in school. And then we used to make jokes about it while we were in class. So you know what? I'm really working out right now as I'm sitting down here. And we used to make jokes about it in class. So after, you know, I, I had babies and so on, I didn't have vaginal beds. I had... Um, Cesarean. Cesarean. And honestly, I didn't have any of these experiences. So when people ask me, hey, vaginal birth or CS, I always tell them, have a CS. <laughs> because, you know, the CS comes with its own complications. And, you know, it is a major surgery. Sometimes you have to go under. For my second baby, I had to go under because I had major complications. Wow. You know, for my first birth, you know, 15 minutes, the baby was out. They were, you know, um, stitching, stitching me, me back together. I had the baby. My husband and I were taking selfies. But for the second baby, I was on the table for hours. Wow. They didn't even let my husband in. I had to go under. I thought I was dead. I mean, I woke up and I, was, I thought I was not. I didn't, I didn't think I was. You had to pinch yourself. Look, I kept asking my husband if I was still alive. Oh. So it was, a, it was a very weird experience for me. It was very so, difficult. Yeah. So, and I, I didn't even have a, a horizontal stitch. I, ha I had to have a vertical stitch across my belly. Why? Because I had a placenta accreta. Oh. And so they had to, so they, they, they wanted to do a hysterectomy. Wow. But then, by the grace of God, they were able to figure it out. Really? Yeah. They were able to figure it out. I had wow. about 12 doctors on me. So, oh. yeah, they were that able to figure it out. You were like you. You have no idea. The Acrita, the Acrita simply means It was actually like, yes. in Krita. So it started with normal placenta previa. And then along the line, they said it was Acrita. And then they said it was in Krita. So now it was like this with my... So wow. you know your placenta is on one so, side. So and the placenta is now attached. No matter what you do, it's attached to the uterus and you can't bring off. it out. Yeah. So that's what I she's went saying. I that too. I was oh. almost, yeah, um, supposed to be on CS. But the day I was booked, my doctor was like, no, you gave birth and your first child was 4.5. So wow. this one you can't. And I was 4. like, 5. yeah. And that was where I had the cut. And that's he's a like, big baby. Big, yeah, big baby. Big. And he's still big till now. Ah, that's a big so baby. So he's like, no, you are going to give birth. We won't do UCS. Go home. I went back home. It took like three weeks' time. I kept going back and forth till like three weeks' time before the baby came out. Even that, I was putting on, what's it called? You were induced? Forced labor, yes. Wow. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy at was all. The of the new baby? <laughs> she was... 3.3. 3. Okay, yeah. that's manageable. And I wasn't cut. It, it came out. You did, she just came yes. out. Well, good for you. I was scared though because of the first experience. Yeah. And lo and behold, I, I can only imagine to like the trauma that comes with vaginal delivery. Mm. I can't imagine the trauma Doesn't that comes with vaginal <laughs> delivery. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, when we come back, we'll talk about the things they tell us to do. Sit in hot water, do this, do that. And. Everything in between. This is <laughs> this is our show on postpartum sex. You're watching We Got This Africa. Stay tuned. We got this. have a hearty, healthy family. Phytol Sunflower Cooking Oil. Also cholesterol free for tasty, healthy meals. Love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Kaiser Intelligence System is that magical experience in our lapel range. And it's got a TFT touch control system in this extractor, an induction hot plate, 
with a tempered glass surface powered by the world premium Shot Ziran. Shock resistant and it comes with its grill plates. Every space of this induction hob can cook and we call it the Frizo. Just touch to control the extractor fan speed. The power slide on the induction hob gives you the freedom to regulate its power to your desire. Magically powerful in extracting heat, smoke and harmful odors without being a noisy nuisance in your cooking space. And because we care, the induction hob has a safety guard and child lock function. Now, look at that food. Kaiser knows how to bring the best in every cook. Kaiser. Power in action. I wonder about the complications that women who have had vaginal deliveries have to endure when it's time to have sex, if they want to do it at all. Because from my, my personal experience as a CS mom, I did not have all these complications that other moms talk about. Today, we're talking about postpartum sex and everything in between. I'm talking to Rosetta and Ethel, and we have, I, I think we've, we, we've said a lot about the things that we need to consider, the things that happen. Now, I'm told that when you have a vaginal delivery, you have to sit in hot water. I mean, this is something that we all hear about. Mm -hmm. You have to sit in hot water every day after yeah. the baby, and it's supposed to help heal your insides. Did you do that? Um, with my situation, because I had a cut and I was stitched, they told me not to apply too much heat. Because okay. the kind of stitch I had, it will melt in. They won't have to take back the thread. Wait, do some people go back to remove the thread? That, that there was some, previously. Yeah. Not anymore. Not mm. anymore. Ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they were like, too much heat. We but melted. Curious, but yes, we're doing that. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so you didn't have to sit in hot water? No, no, no. no Did you no. have to sit in hot water? Yes. Wow. Tell me about it. So do you sit <laughs> inside the water or what? What do you do exactly? Yeah, so um, with my first child, I had to sit on a bucket. Describe a bucket, the A bucket of hot water okay. um, with um, salt. The bigger um, marbles, home. yes, inside it, and um, it was it was very it wasn't pleasant and comfortable. Was it painful? It, and then my mother made sure that the water is, was very very hot, like hot. Boiled water. Yes, nice. yes. Yeah. And you, if you don't sit on it, uh, your your the place will become so wide. Your husband will leave you. <laughs> So that kind of scary things they will tell you. I was, a, I was a professional then as well, but I still got carried away. And I was like, I was also afraid because if they are telling you the place is going to be open, I, I lost my, that kind of thing, I, the thing I've, I've learned in school. Okay. So then if you leave it, you don't sit on it, and the water was very hot and you will sit on it. And sometimes the bucket, because it's too hot and your weight on the bucket, if the bucket is not that of a plastic that will hold, you will just find yourself burning yourself in the distance. So it was a, 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 an Do you experience. have to like sit on it the whole time or you sit down and get up? Sit Me, down I was get up. getting up and getting up. But my mother would say, sit, sit. Like, just make sure you sit. And that thing, um, you know, our mothers, those things they are doing, no? As much as they don't have the background of what it does for us, it was actually good. It's just that it doesn't have to be too hot of a water. So the warm seat bath, they are good because personally, uh, recently with my last bath, I was using the Pleasure City, the Plaza, Pleasure City bath salt in there. And now it's just comfortable. You just pour your, your warm water inside. It's not hot water. It doesn't have to be hot water. So even if you are in stitches, you can sit in because it's not hot. So it's not going to melt the stitches because there is, there is a percentage or a temperature of... Uh, hotness that can melt away the uh, incision site. So if that temperature is not, is not being met, then you can assess it in a warm water. So it's, it's like a pan. So I just pour in my warm water and put in my, my sit bath salt. And then you feel comfortable and sit inside the water. You sit in it. So this time around, it's not like I'm on the bucket whereby I'm hopping on and off, but I'm inside the water. So it gets to the temperature of this warm water goes in there and then introduces enough blood supply to the area of birth, that is the perineum. 
and then in the process of that, it gets to strengthen the muscles over there. Okay. And then it helps so with healing. the healing process. Is that only for um, women who have vaginal births? No, with CS you can as well. I had CS with my previous okay, one and I was doing didn't. that. Oh, I see. And even with the CS, how the, the sit back comes in and it helps much more because in the first three days where the incision sites still have the plaster on and it's not being removed, you are told that you have to be aware of how you apply water to yourself. Yeah. So you advise, if possible, don't even bath. Yeah. So if you're not bathing and you're just doing some dry cleaning of the place, as a woman, you will not feel comfortable down yeah. there. Yeah. So when you sit in this kind of bowl, you are good to go. Interesting. Well, I, I, never, I never did a sit bath or hot water, anything, nothing. The only thing I was concerned, so I had my baby, both of them early. So I was in NICU. I didn't, <laughs> like for my second baby, for example, I was in NICU. I didn't, I wasn't even thinking about myself at all. All I was thinking about was my child in an incubator somewhere and, you know, I have been discharged and I'm supposed to go home and the child is in an incubator and I was just lurking around the hospital waiting. Like, I was always at the NICU. I was home for like an hour a day and I was back at the NICU. So the things I was concerned about really was like my incisions. And because I had a vertical incision, I couldn't even sit no. like this. Like, you know, you always have to sit, yeah. always have to sit up because at least bend. you can't even bend. Like, because you, it was like right here. So I'm like, I, I, I didn't have time for all of that. What I did though was tie my stomach every day. Wow. Like that, that was, one. That was your major concern, I, I guess. I was just tying the thing. Also, it helped me sit up, mm. right? Yeah, it helped me, bed, it helped me stay, tight. you know, sit upright. So mm -hmm. I, I was make, making sure that I wrapped my belly every day. I don't know if that thing actually helps you um, shrink. It helps shrink the uterus. No, where the but, uterus in the or process, whatever, no. whatever it is, your stomach, you know, <laughs> like, you know, because they tell us, you know, you have to tie your stomach tight so it doesn't just fall out and all that. So the day I had my C-section, the next day, I think the same day, but later in the night, I wrapped it with my plaster and everything. The nurse actually wrapped it for me. So the nurse came and she wrapped it with a medical um, band and I kept it on for a few days. And that's, that's the only self-care, really. I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't taking any showers. I wasn't bathing. I wasn't even eating. So, because I, I, was, I was stressed, sorry, sorry. depressed, tired, anxious about the baby in the incubator. Because yeah. that's what you got tired of, yeah. So, that's, that's all I was thinking about. I remember my six-week appointment. You know, when we're out, we're out, you know, we're fine. The doctors, all they were really interested in which was checking my incision and stuff like that to make sure that I was okay. And I was bleeding so much. Wow. So, so wow. definitely not thinking about sex at all. I, I bled for a while. Wow. wow. Oh, yeah. I, I had... Like how long? Long. Yeah. I had to go back because I had issues. Like, I had issues with my pregnancy wow. and, and, my, and my birth. So, and, so the doctors were actually very curious about me and... I had a lot of visits, and I had to keep going back to the hospital. So the one thing that I remember doing was wrapping my belly. Like, that's the one thing I was doing and buying maxi pads. But I remember wrapping my belly, and that's the, that's the only care I remember giving to myself and my body. Leah called me about her Flexi City. Is it Flexi? Flexi City. Flexi City. Leah called me. It's, it's a shit bath. And I, recently I told her, I said, Leah, at that time when you were talking to me about this thing, eh? My mind no did her cow. <laughs> I was, it was the last thing on my mind. I still, she sent me one. I still have it. It's sitting on my table somewhere in my home. But I, I never had the luxury of using it. So it's, it's great to hear that it actually helps. Um, no, it, it, it helps moms. It helps. And it's something that you should consider doing. I see. And your breastfeeding, yeah. doesn't that deter you from wanting to have sex? Because then you've got breast. So when I was breastfeeding, sometimes as soon as I took off the nursing bra, like the breast was, the milk was just yeah, everywhere, actually. all over the place. Mm -hmm. how, how are you having sex with all that? I haven't started yet, but so my right hormones are... Still be on. Yes, but then... Do you, you know, sleep with your bra on when you were breastfeeding? Yes. Okay. Because it, it, it was also very painful. Yeah, you have to yeah. be doing that. If not, then I made sure I always wore something that was tight to hold it. I was wearing a nursing bra all the time mm. with mm. breast pads. Yes, mm. that helps. Mm. And in the in the in the process of sex, after birth, when you get orgasm, mm. you know you realize that the breast milk will be coming out. Okay. Mm. In the process of getting the orgasm, 
because there is a stimulating hormone, oxytocin. That's also the, the work it does around that time is when um, you have orgasm, it's, it's, it's being released. And when it's being released, then there's, it, it helps in the reflex of bringing out the milk. Okay. So see. in the process of getting orgasm, you will see your milk will be coming. Mm. So the, the, the people who are, are, are watching us should be ready that in the that process of... Really, like, it sounds like a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> So you just have to have your breast pad. So you always have to have a bra then, on and the pad. And have breast pads in. Yeah. And you're probably going to be bleeding or you don't bleed. No, with the, the bleeding, um, it will depend. Depend. Six to eight After weeks. After birth, how long are you supposed to bleed for? And I'm oh. saying it's, it's, it ranges from individual. Okay. Okay. But normally, at least, by the sixth week to the eighth week, it has to stop. For hmm. mine, it was just for a week. I and see. It, it, it some people, How does it some people, two weeks. Favorite child? <laughs> <laughs> no, so then the maximum. My normal menses, I bleed for just two days. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So okay. I don't you know if... favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It felt so. like it was abnormal at first because they were like, I need to go check that out even before I started having children. children. Yes. But they were fine. like, there's the possibility that you might not have kids. So I went to the hospital. They were like, Nothing Everything is wrong is with you. You're I fine. See. So until I started giving birth with my first child, it took like two weeks. This one, it was just a week. Hmm. And then it cut out. So are you sure you haven't have started having sex? Oh, no. I'm, I'm, I'm really preparing now. I really, don't have the feel. I, I have the edge, the feeling. I, I really want to even force my husband. But he feels he might hurt me. Because no, he's told me. <laughs> no, but it's six to eight weeks there. You know, mm -hmm. even before delivery and you are having complications as to when the baby is supposed to come and hasn't come. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you this is the time you need your husband to push it. He was scared. He was like, oh, no, I can't do this. And he oh, stopped, really? yes, he stopped having sex with me when I was like three months. So uh -huh. after that, up until I gave birth till now, he's still scared. He's like, no, I can't. No, this scary is getting get scared. <laughs> it's, okay. it's getting scared. But do you feel, I mean, you want it mentally, like you feel like, okay, you want to have sex, but do you feel like your body is ready? How is everything? I feel it because there are times I feel I, I, I know I'm wet. Yes. And then I tell him, he's like, no, hold it. Have some patience. I'm really going to have time for you. Not now. When? Exactly. That has been my question <laughs> ever since he told me to hold on. Okay. Yes, so I'm still holding on. Hmm. But you can tease him and he, he wouldn't have a choice. The problem is, you he know... He has made I, up his mind. <laughs> <laughs> he has made up his mind. Why and you, now we don't share about, about you. Room, so the teasing will really get him. You're, you're mm. with the baby in another room. Yes. No, but okay. if you are really up to it, you can get him to do it. Do you want to share some tips with us? Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want him to do it, you get him like, doing it. How, what do you do? Oh, no, like, you know, as a woman, you know how to get your man, you, but know. you know. And, and <laughs> his mind is not made up, mm -hmm. you won't enjoy it. That's the part I don't want. I want him to make up his mind. So, like, so I think your, your, your husband needs to be talked to because sometimes they have the notion that you are in pain, you are still. Mm -hmm. yes. But when they are educated, like, they get to know that, oh, this is how it is. So. That's probably, a really important point because yeah. when we talk about childbirth and all the issues that come with it, we often just focus on the woman mm -hmm. and we hardly ever think about the man and the what man, he might yes. be going through yes. too. Yes. Because among other things, I mean, if you're with a man who you love, who sees you have a child, yes. he should be traumatized. Yeah. yeah. And it I should traumatize him. That's what is his problem now. Was he in the room with you? Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and I there think it's, he said his, his brother was right there when his wife was giving birth. Okay. It took him two years to have an erection. Yes, yeah, so I'm sure he's also trying so psychologically not Psychologically, he had an effect on yes. his brain. Do you I provide guess. counseling for men after their wives give birth? No. Not really. No. I think it's I something think so. we really if should consider doing. The woman reports to the doctor. Because around the time my baby wasn't coming, no, but, they had to but, call but him. In our counseling se section for that, it's not really like all to the man. It's more of the pair. So yeah. we talk about sex all though, but I think we have to really specialize into talking about that alone. Yeah, yeah. that's important. 
because you know we're thinking about a woman because she has physically experienced it but if you're with a man who loves you he will be i mean he doesn't even have to be a, he just has to be another human being in the room yeah you will be traumatized saying yeah. that yeah. i watch videos of beth and i'm traumatized just by mm. watching the video yeah. so i can imagine being in the room and seeing that happen you know mm -hmm. to a woman mm -hmm. you love mm -hmm. and so perhaps when we have these conversations about childbirth, we should think about the men also and yeah. how they feel. Yeah. Perhaps we shouldn't even have a show with men whose wives have given birth to tell us how they're feeling yeah. about this. Mm -hmm. Because I can only imagine, I mean, my husband was with me, but you know, with C-sections, there's a screen. So he's here with me and you know, we're taking selfies and taking videos. And whatever was happening was happening on the other side. And when they finished, they brought the baby over to yeah. us. And also a photographer to pictures. You know, we didn't see any of that. But if you are present to watch a vaginal birth, it's crazy. That must be crazy. Yeah. I can understand how he would not, not have an erection in two years. So, so we, did he get any therapy for that or no? They just had over to time him, just like to get his mind off it, not think about it, and see the woman as the woman he knew before. And there's so nothing this, this wrong with him. This person is a psychologist. Mm. To <sighs> them down. Yeah. It's not easy. Sometimes some of them get there, and I have had somebody who we read, a man who we read. He just, peed on himself. Yes. There are videos of men passing out. There are videos yes. of men collapsing. Oh, yes, yes. That one is the, re the regular normal one. <laughs> oh, it yes, happens a lot. peeing on yourself, wow. it was something else. <laughs> okay. Wow. Dear men, we know that when we talk about birth and deliveries, we don't talk about you guys, but. This conversation is opening my mind and my eyes to the trauma that you also experience when your women have babies. You're watching We Got This Africa. We'll be right back. We got this. have a hearty, healthy family. Frytol Sunflower Cooking Oil. Also cholesterol-free for tasty, healthy meals. Love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. our episode on postpartum sex today on We Got This Africa. Now, before, uh, during the break, while we're gisting, you said that there was one thing that made you always forget Just about the all the pain and everything. Just seeing the baby, how beautiful it was, how successful everything went. And that just wipes away the tears. Doesn't make you forget, because I hear that, you know, after you have the baby, you forget the pain, and I no, wonder. it doesn't. You don't forget. It doesn't make me forget, but at least it makes me feel it was worth it. Okay. Yeah. You have any regrets? No. Because no. I look at the baby and I'm like, is this my baby? <laughs> yes. I think personally, I'm fine. Just that. It makes me ask myself if I want to go back to the labor ward again after nine months and all that I go to, you know. You do I'm, done. I'm done. I'm actually done giving yeah, sure. birth. Hey, hey, you hear stop. this every day. Right? I'm done. <laughs> you hear it all the time. <laughs> what? I don't even think I would have gone. I don't even think I would have gone for the second time if I hadn't gotten married. Because I said to myself, it's not a crime to have one child, but I need to have. It's one not a crime not husband. to have any children anyway. Yes, it's not a crime. I'm yeah. done. I'm done. It's not a crime. But if well, you're if you're you. healthy and you can. You still have babies, why not? Ah, the pain. It's expensive. Pain. Because it's expensive. It's School fees is expensive. <laughs> Come to think of being pregnant, sitting yeah. around, not being your regular self. 
And you know, it, it was like serious. I'm saying, is she sure? Is because she haven't tried sex yet, have you? No. You know, the moment they start I'm having really sex, they forget myself. about everything. <laughs> I'm ready no, it's to just natural. Myself. It's just natural. <laughs> you just practically forget about ah. the pain you went through. Okay. So before you realize you're pregnant again. Wow. No, so so I'm not going to allow pregnancy. that. So, so <laughs> that's that statement. Me, I won't do again. I won't come again. They are the ones who come earlier than the, the ones. <laughs> <laughs> I see. But, wow. you know, uh, pregnancy is hard. And yeah. it's, like it or not, Very. pregnancy is a matter of life and death. Very. It's a matter of life and death. Mm. So, me, I always say that, like, for my friends who don't want to have children, I support them 100%. You tell but me you don't I want to have a baby, to I tell you... To know how it's it feels no, like. No, no. If you <laughs> want it, fine. If mm. you don't want it, fine. I, I, it. I really think so. If you want to have a baby, have it. If you don't want to have a baby, don't. Because it's a matter of life and death, and you must really want it to do it. Yeah, because it's a lot of sacrifice. I know sacrifice. people who have died, mm -hmm. oh, you know, in the labor ward. And one of them, she didn't want it. Oh, okay. And everybody kept telling her she needed to. You need to. You are a woman, and you are growing, and you need to, and you need to. Hmm. She died. Oh. She has left a child. So when I think about things like that, I'm like, look, if you want to do it, please do it. If you don't want it, don't. It's all start from the brain, you know, yeah. because the brain is such like a machine that how you want to control it accordingly. Because if you psych your mind that I don't want to have babies, yeah, you know, your system also releases hormones that will prevent you from having babies. Mm. So the moment you are finding yourself at the other side of, of what your mind was thinking, then on the day, you're I don't know scared. how, yes, you get scared, you know, and you are not able to control your mental states, like with the pain and everything. Yeah. So if you are not ready to yeah. cope with the pain and everything, you give in easily. I was told what, during my surgery, my doctor said to me, you know, your attitude would also affect the results of the yes. surgery. Mm -hmm. He said you need to, he actually said something he shouldn't have said. That if you think you're going to die, you probably would. Mm. So stop thinking that. It's true. And think that everything is going to be okay. Because your energy also affects the results of the surgery. And I thought that was a very mean thing to say, but when I think about it... It's true. It's it, not, it's, it actually shifted my attitude. Fast. It actually, it, really, it does. It shifted my attitude, so you I know, became more hopeful. When you have a client you are going to treat, or you have a patient with you, and you get to know that psychologically they are not ready, it means that it's a no-no. No, no. no matter what it. you try. Don't do it. As a doctor or as a medical professional, whichever side you are, the moment you realize that, oh, this person is ready for this, and they have some belief that, yes, I'll be fine, they are already, you already got them fine. And that is what, um, it's something that is, it's, it's linked to our brain, but we think it's just not natural and it's normal that, oh. We just say it. Yes, that is why it. somebody feels like, oh, when I go to this pastor, my problem will be solved. Okay. You know, psychologically, you've prepared yourself. So, um, the yes, in. and it, the moment you get a positive thought, you work towards it because you channel your your destiny. Mm -hmm. When you are giving the medication, pastor gives you a cancer, you are ready to do it. Because <laughs> you think that <laughs> you have the hope in there. So the moment you psych your mind that, oh, this surgery, I believe in this doctor. Yeah. Or I believe in this midwife. Yeah, or I believe there. in, yes. Yeah. Or I think I can make it through this childbirth. Well, definitely I, you go I through still it think that there are so many children in this world who need parents. So if you don't want to birth your own child, there are children who need parents. So you, you, you can adopt a child. That's if you don't want it, right? Yeah. If you don't want it, don't force yourself. Yeah. It's what I think. Don't, because like you said, you've already made up your mind. And then you're going to suddenly change your mind because of pressure. That's and then you get there and you're like, you, you know, so, sometimes it even contributes to postpartum depression because mm -hmm. this person didn't want to do this anyway. Yeah. Especially those who have one child and they're happy and everyone says, it was the second, second one. Second one, second one, second one. Second one, second one, second one. You force someone to go and have another child. So let's let people be. If they want it. We, we the people who want it, we are here. We've had it. <laughs> you know? Some want and won't, and, and, you know, are not able to have. Some, want, some don't want. Let everybody be whatever they want. Because, Charlie, it's not easy to be a parent. First of all, the pregnancy and postpartum care is like two years of your life. Mm on hold, two years, yeah. you are pregnant. If you are, unfortunately, you're sick throughout the pregnancy, that's like, in fact, I don't even know why we say nine months of pregnancy, it's like 10 months, <laughs> 40 weeks. Yeah. How many months mm -hmm. is that? Mm -hmm. 40 weeks is 10 months. Yeah. 
that, that's phase one. Phase two, postpartum care. Phase three, taking care of an infant. That's like two years of your life is on oh, My brain pool. <laughs> it's not easy. So let the people who want to have it, have it. Those who want to have just leave them alone. And, and I don't think we exhausted our conversation on the bleeding after, 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 after birth. You said that after six weeks, it has to stop. How about those who have it more than six weeks? It shouldn't, it shouldn't even get to six weeks, so. Okay. But it depends on the individual. And sometimes, too, it's about our minds. Everything is from the mind, though. You know, the hormones that are doing that, as much as um, the sites that the placenta was taken from have to shed off, and that is what we see as the, um, the lochia, we call it lochia, or the bleeding after birth. You know, it, first, it will come like that reddish thing you are right after. But within the first week to the second week, it's supposed to change color to brownish. Like, looks like brown waist, like pinkish, that kind of thing. So from there, then it changes again to yellow waist, as if it's yellow waist, as if it's watery. Yes. Uh -huh. So the moment you realize that, oh, it started being brown, but then <laughs> it started coming red again, bright red again, there is a problem. Yes. So if the locker haven't ended and it changes to bright red, then you are bleeding postpartum leave. So you have to rush as soon as possible to the hospital. But the moment the bleeding have stopped, and you think that you have exhausted all the changes and the colors have come. And you realize that, oh, mens you, you are bleeding again. Then it could be your menses. Okay. Yes. Could it be your medication too? Because there are people that after delivery, they feel, I've had my child, I'm fine. Why do I have to go back to medication? Hmm. Which yes. medication? You know, you'll be given some vitamins and That's stuff. That's not to, to take, take them. There are people who don't. And in I've fact, seen those and medications are very important. They are vital okay. because they, some of them are helping you to get your appetite for food and then regulate <coughs> your blood system and everything. And other of them are also trying to help so that you don't get infections at the, the birth um, through the vagina or even the walls of the perineum. Okay. So they are there to help you. Some are antibiotics. And some are also so, to help you with the blood level and everything, help you eat it. So why don't you take I'm them? I'm sitting here thinking, what them? medication? Because I, I don't think I even took it. You didn't take them? I don't remember. I think all no. I was taking was pain, pain, pain medication. Oh. oh, no. So you take the pain medication and you take and the vitamins as That's all I remember. Well. Anyway, what do I know? It's a while ago. I don't remember much. Um, <laughs> but hey, it's not easy. And I'm so glad that we could have this conversation. Right. And with their sex, eh, if, if some people don't actually bleed, okay. like their menses doesn't set in. Some can go as far as one year and a half. Okay. And then after birth, menses have not started. So with such a person, it means that you have to be extra careful. Okay. Because the moment you have sex unprotectedly, then your tendencies of getting pregnant unaware is high. Because now your system have not revealed to you your next menses for you to calculate from there, from there and see yourself as to how much when cycle or what you have safe. now. So with those people, it's very, very dicey. You have to be very, very careful. We have the lactating amenorrhea method, whereby you are expressing breast milk, so it subdues the maturity of your eggs. Mm. It doesn't make the eggs grow, so they don't mm. come out as menses if they don't meet a sperm. Okay, but that one, if you are doing um, exclusive, you can have that method as a family planning method for you, naturally. Okay. But you have to be extra careful because in the process of that, definitely one day, one day, your ex will mature. It'll and come and surprise coming. you. Yes. <laughs> so when you okay. are not much aware yeah. and you are having sex on and off, on and off, just because you think you are free, mental having started, you can easily get pregnant. So yeah. you have to be cautioned. <laughs> on how they do it or protect themselves in the yeah. acts. Thanks, thanks for sharing that last bit. Yeah. Thanks for sharing last bit. And thank you for coming on and for sharing today. I'm really, really you. grateful. We've had a great conversation, I think. And I hope that you have learned something from our talk today. You're watching We Got This Africa, our episode on postpartum sex. My name is Na Ashoko. Thank you for your time. Life is full of places. Sometimes you fool. Sometimes it's bad while we run the races, although it's far. So, I have a riddle. Riddle, riddle. Riddle. Are you good with riddles? <laughs> Not really. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> so, riddle, riddle. Riddle. And this, this riddle is, is inspired by Frital, by the way. Um, our new tagline for Frital is 
You deserve a life of goodness. Yeah. Okay, so riddle, riddle. Riddle. How many times do you have to use oil before throwing it away? How many times? You have to use oil. You know, like if you fry your kelly with the oil or whatever with the oil, how many times do you have to use before throwing it away? Twice. Okay, you? <laughs> don't say nine or ten. <laughs> so you know how no, I feel like it's it's darker or it's changing in color or something. when it changes color i don't know <laughs> so if it doesn't change color you change it <laughs> <laughs> okay the correct answer is once wow. once you use oil you have to throw it away Whoa. yep <laughs> you don't agree <laughs> you so, don't agree so, so let's say i i just fry something the the oil is too fresh when you finish nothing. frying your yam throw the oil away <laughs> Tomorrow, if you want to fry yam again, use another fresh oil from the bottle. We Got This Africa is an April Communications production with support from Kaiser. Proudly brought to you by Frytol. Frytol, you deserve a life of goodness.